Hello and welcome to the Premier Football Podcast here on PFP Media. Happy Easter, everybody. As always, I'm your host, Rafe Garland, joined by my good friend, Joe Doherty. Joe, how are you getting on? Have you been indulging on a, on chocolate Easter eggs over the weekend? I, I absolutely have, Rafe. I'm, I'm, I don't eat that many sweet things usually, but um, I do enjoy Easter. There's something unique about Easter egg chocolate. Um, be it be it good quality like Lily O'Brien's or Butler's or or Lint or kind of run of the mill stuff like Cadbury's, um, just the, the the smell and the I don't know what it is, but there's something unique about Easter egg chocolate, and it, it, for me, it's a cut above regular chocolate. So yeah, I've 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 absolutely been tucking in. How about yourself? Um, I mean. I didn't actually get that many Easter eggs until last night. This is obviously Tuesday morning now. Apologies for the, the lack of a Monday show. The, the banker got in the way. But there was an Easter egg shortage, Joe, last week. I, I left a lot of my right. Easter, Easter egg shopping to the last minute. Wouldn't, wouldn't be like me. So I, I had to give away a couple of my Easter eggs uh, as gifts. <laughs> and yeah. ended, up, ended up a little bit uh, shorthanded. But yeah, I, I've had a, had a little bit of chocolate. Um, I, I've, I've been quite happy this weekend, though. So I've not felt the need to, to binge on chocolate. I've been very happy as well. And I've been happy without football, uh, even though football was not good for me this weekend. Um, I, I've been very happy w- without it. And the weekend itself was great. It was sunny, um, lots of food. I was running a lot. Running uh, obviously makes you feel great. And um, yeah, man, li- li- life is pretty good. I think we're both quite chilled out right now for a couple of weeks. Um, we- we're-, we're both in phases that are kind of mellow and, and there's not too much going on uh, but pretty soon for both of us there will be a lot more going on but right now we we have a bit of relaxation time well what what is going on joe is that liverpool are back in the race for the top four an emphatic win on saturday night they've got champions league football back on tonight so unlike yourself i am absolutely loving the football i think it's it's three okay. wins three wins in a row for liverpool in all competitions uh, the champions league wolves and then arsenal they're four clean sheets for for Quebec and Phillips and four starts you know things things are things are looking up as far as I'm so you're concerned. you're happy because of football yes and, I am and I'm happy outside despite of football, football. <laughs> yeah yeah I think I think I'm happier with my uh happiness then in that case because <laughs> be, happiness because of football uh has a tendency to not be long term to, to, to be taken away from you it's a, it's a house uh, of cards uh, isn't it? It, it it is yeah 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 and it can crumble at any at any given moment but right yeah no liverpool have, have had a little 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 bit of a good spell well look that that was obviously was the game of the weekend um obviously leicester played city as well um but i think you, you can't look past that game on saturday night um Mm. One team showed up to play football, Joe, Liverpool, and, and they deserve their win. I don't think anybody yeah. could argue with that. But I'm, I'm almost more interested in what on earth Arsenal and Arteta were trying to do. I, my, my, my feeling is that the, the midfield and front four, maybe Odegaard aside, went, went on strike. I mean, you could see countless times, especially with the wide players, that Chambers on the right and Tierney on the left were actively shouting at Pepe and Aubameyang, respectively, to press the Liverpool players in possession of the ball. And they weren't doing it. And the, 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 lack, of, <laughs> the lack of work rate from Aubameyang and Pepe and, and Lacazette and Ceballos in particular was disgraceful. That that is the that is the worst game of football that I have seen Arsenal play in a very long time, and that's saying something. And the scoreline uh, flatters Arsenal. It absolutely flattered Arsenal because it could have been six. It 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 should have been six seven eight. I think if Liverpool had been at the the top of their confidence, it, if it had been last year and Arsenal turned up playing like that, it would have been a cricket score. I I, I mean I, I I I think all of those players that I've just mentioned need to be sold. Need to have gotten rid of. I, I'm completely done with Aubameyang. Completely done with him. He's been useless this season. Absolutely useless. If you sign a contract for that amount of money and you're captain of a football club, you have an obligation to work at 120% every single week. And he hasn't put in a shift once this season. He's been pathetic. He's embarrassing. And with him as captain of the club, with his attitude and his... Uh, his how he's been uh, performing this season it's no coincidence that Arsenal are where they are if you have the captain 
not turning up for post-match interviews when the team loses, not working hard, not communicating with players, not leading from the front, you're going to be in dire straits. And that's exactly what Arsenal are right now. I think that the, the lack of... The, the, the lack of, uh, you, you know, commentary on Aubameyang this season is, is, is very strange. I mean, th- this is a guy who is scoring, not just score, but th- do you remember the confidence that he played in in the, in the FA Cup run and in, in the Community Shield against I- Liverpool? It's yeah. a completely different player. And the, the fact that this isn't being talked about on, on, a, on a weekly basis is just beyond me because he's been pathetic this season. And, I, and I can't I, stay at the club. I agree well. with you in 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 lot, so many ways about that. I, I think that's probably the worst, the single worst Arsenal performance that I've seen in, in twenty plus years of watching the Premier League. It was absolutely diabolical. I think that you're right in terms of the effort of a lot of these players in terms of closing down Liverpool and affording them too much space. Yeah, they have to get out and get up. But when you touch on Aubameyang and Pepe, they seem to almost have been deployed as as wing backs as part of a back six. You know, and if you're talking about, look, I'm, I'm not commenting on Aubameyang over the course of the season. Obviously, his form has been nowhere near what's expected or, or what's required of him. But I think that some criticism has to has to be leveled at the role in which he, he's being deployed and, and, and being asked to play. Because you, you spoke about this free scoring forward, this confident attacking player, and he's been taken out of his most effective areas. You know, if, if you ask yourself, where do you want Pierre uh, Emmerich Aubameyang receiving the ball? You want him running off the shoulder of a defender and getting in behind, getting through on goal. And you don't particularly want him defending against Mo Salah in, in wide areas at home. I, I completely agree. If you're going to be playing Aubameyang as a, as a wide player, it's, uh, it's very much in the, you know, we're talking about the way Cristiano Ronaldo plays wide left for Real Madrid. It's or, taking, or, or, or Mo Salah, Salah plays right. on the, yeah, yeah ex- exactly. It's taking up those positions. Um, that being said, if you're if you're playing if you're playing out wide, you have to be tracking back. And and I mean, this is strange because I've seen him work hard many 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 times. I've seen him put in a shift, but there's something this season where it's not. I I, I mean, he was a joke, and it's not just him. I'm I'm, I'm, really, I'm really not. Pepe was a joke as well. Those two in particular. And in in modern football, if you're not pressing. From the front, I think Odegaard was the only one of the front four who was trying to press, but no one else was pressing with him. And the way Arteta sets Arsenal up, he li- he wants them to press. I mean, I I think Arteta deserves a lot of blame this season. I I think that uh, should Arsenal not win the Europa League, then he he would be very lucky to be in a job next season. I I I have no defense for him being in a job next season if Arsenal don't win the Europa League. Um. To, to put it in perspective, the... Arsenal are tenth now, level with Leeds in eleventh. If they if they had won that game, they would have been a point behind Liverpool, who are now being talked about as, as almost favourites to qualify for the Champions League. I mean, mm. this game what? was it was absolutely a huge game, massive, and they, they did a huge you, game. You talk about not laying a glove. Arsenal didn't get out of their half. Didn't get out of their box. They're, they're, like I didn't... Lacazette was playing, but I mean, they, they weren't even kicking the long balls to him. They just hoofed the balls out for throw-ins and, and back to the but, keeper. Do, do, you, do you know why that was? It's because. When the centre backs got on the ball, there was no one showing for it. The only way they could go was back to Leno, who then had no option but to punt it forward. And he's not particularly good. I mean, I, there was just no movement for me. It all stemmed from. And I know there was some calamitous defending, and I know Leno is not in good form, and there's no competition for him, which is an, another serious issue. But everything stemmed from the, the midfield and the forwards not moving. Not moving when Arsenal were on the ball. Not moving when Arsenal were off the ball. I, 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 I can't, like, like as I said at the start of the show, from I, I felt like they went on strike. I don't know what's been going on <laughs> this season. I, I kind of wish that Amazon or Netflix had been doing a series on Arsenal this season <laughs> because I think it would have been incredible to watch. You know, with the whole Özil drama in the first half of the season and the, the, I don't know whatever's going on now. It's it's very very worrying and. You have to say, though, that the, the, as, as poor as Arteta has been for, for lots of this season, I don't think he's the biggest problem at the club. And I think that that is, is really, 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 really strange. Like, that's, that's really scary as an Arsenal fan, that there's so much else wrong. Yeah, and look, Arsenal have been in 
relatively decent form in, in 2021, the, the, in, mm. especially in comparison to the start of the season. They, they did seem to have gathered some form of momentum. But I think, obviously, look, they, they weren't playing against West Brom here. They weren't playing against a, a bottom a bottom side team. You know, this is a Liverpool team that, as I've said, really are coming back into form. They're, they're the defending Premier League mm. champions and they played like it. At the weekend, and I think what we've seen from Fabinho moving back into midfield is he he shuts down everything. You talk about those lack of passing options out of the back, and I think that Arsenal and Arteta were almost kind of taken by surprise with how at it this Liverpool team were, and maybe he didn't expect to need Aubameyang and Pepe defending on the edge of their own box. He thought that there might be a bit more space in behind for them to get into and Arsenal might be able to go on the front foot. You look at the midfielders that he picked. Sabaya started the game, you know, he thought he maybe he might have a bit more space, but it wasn't the game for him. You know, maybe Gran and Jacker or somebody a bit more combative. Yeah, Jacker was ill. He missed out through illness. Or or El Nenny yeah. or whoever it was, you know, could have started in there instead. So look, I think we do we can't just get stuck into Arsenal here because Liverpool did play incredibly well. They they didn't seem to do much wrong that they, they they didn't create many chances in the first half and I think Arsenal actually defended really doggedly in the first half you know the defenders put their bodies on the line they got out they blo- they closed down the ball they they blocked the shots but Liverpool just ground them down over after an hour when you look at Liverpool bringing Di- Diogo Jota off the bench who's just scored whatever it was three goals in three games for for Portugal um, and then you, you turn and look at Arsenal and, and they didn't quite have the same ability to, to, to change the game off the bench yeah, I, I, Arsenal obviously had a few injuries in attacking positions and obviously Xhaka missing as well, who's been very good in, in the second half of the season. Um, and they Arsenal had nothing on the bench apart from Martinelli, who's very much out of favour right now, which is, is very strange because he was he was so good last season. Um, just touching on Jota, I mean, what a breakout season he's having now. I know he was good for Wolves, but he was never this influential and he would have been one of their two best players along with Raul Jimenez. Um, and yeah, for, for him to be having this impact for, for Liverpool and for Portugal is is really good. And he, he has to go down as one of the signings of the season. In terms of for numbers sure, for Jota, excellent. I think he's got 12 goals in all competitions for Liverpool in 24 appearances. And I think half of those appearances are off the bench. He's got an assist mm. as well, but I think his goals per 90 minutes is, is something like a goal every 98 minutes, which is considerably the best uh, for Liverpool. I think Salah is around 110 minutes, 100, 108 minutes. So, mm. I mean, that, that just shows you um, how good he has been and, and what a miss he was for those four months. I think he, he scored... Four, he scored more goals than Timo Werner now, despite missing four months of the season. And, and yeah, comfortably and, more and, goals. Only sure. starting ten games or something this season, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Like, like I said, he's really been one of the one of the one of the signs of the season. And you were quite right when you were saying when Liverpool were on a poor run, how much they they missed him because they they did, and he changed the game. You know, he won Liverpool the game. Liverpool were well on top, but they were kind of. I think they were Sal- missing that Salah scored his goal. No, yeah, Salah yeah, got the were. second or third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jota came on and 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 made things happen and, and turned the game in their favour. Yeah, it was it was a it. great a great cross into the box to to set him up um, from Trent Alexander mm. Arnold, who's obviously very topical at the moment. Um, I think that that was a was, a massive response from him to to some of the criticism that he's had recently. It was a it was a David Beckham like ball in. Um, my my issue with that is why is Aubameyang not closing him down? He just let him, he just let him cross it in. He didn't even move. He just watched. And then why are Holding and Gabriel not attacking the ball? And why are they letting a five foot seven, five foot eight lad win <laughs> headers in the box? I know the cross was perfect for him, but still, and, and and and, but like, why are the, why are the centre backs not attacking the ball? I, think, I don't like you said the ball the ball was perfect the ball split the center halves right down the middle they couldn't get near it and what we've seen from from Jota especially over the break I think he scored three headers for Portugal over the break mm. is that he times these runs to perfection you think of Tim Cahill a few years ago for Everton this is despite his mm. height he just always managed to appear and then get a great jump in, in in these positions and this is what Liverpool have missed we talk about we've how many times have we spoken about Liverpool needing a genuine number nine on on this show you know, for me now, not, not having that that finishing touch and the amount, of, the amount of headers that Sadio Mane has put over the crossbar this year, Joe, is unbelievable. It's it's not his his strong point, is, is headers. But obviously, Diogo Jota is comfortable in the air, attacking the ball with his head. And, and you think about that on the end of Alexander-Arnold or Robertson or whoever it is putting crosses into the box and suddenly Liverpool have added another dimension to their attack. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you still think you need a number nine? I would say so. I don't think think it's the biggest priority. Okay. I, I think I, I think people will be happy to see Diogo Jota lead the line. Lead the line. He plays number nine for Portugal. He's been playing number nine for Liverpool now. And look, there's what ten games left in the season. Uh, perhaps more if they win some Champions League games. So let, let's see how they get on with him mm. playing as that number nine. But I'd say this is his essentially audition to to take that spot as his own for for next mm. season because there's there's no way that he's not starting any big games from now. I think he only started on the bench because of the the minutes he played for Portugal. Mm. Just to, just to touch on Arsenal again, the, 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 this was the game that Liverpool were meant to have one eye on the, the Champions <laughs> League tie with uh, Real Madrid and, and Arsenal were meant to, you know, come out all guns blazing and set themselves up for, for a, a considerably easier Europa League tie against Slavia Prague. Um, I, I can't, I can't, I'm glad I don't like football anymore. Anyway, that's <laughs> all I'll say. I'm glad I don't like football anymore that I don't care. Well, Joe, you, you touched what, what, while we're on Liverpool and while we're on the, on the Champions mm. League, they, they play Real Madrid tonight in what, what really is a clash of European football royalty. Um, obviously, there, mm. there's no, no Sergio Ramos for Real Madrid, no Ed Nazard, who I actually forgot existed un, until recently. Do Liverpool go into this game as favourites, considering their, their recent form? I don't know about favourites. It's at the Bernabeu. And it's in the Madrid training ground because the Bernabeu is having works done on it. It's in the Madrid training ground. Well, I think it's their, it's their well, second. I'm sure it's their a very se- nice training team ground. Stadium. It's the Castilla, Real Madrid Castilla Stadium. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and actually, that is a nice stadium. I've watched for Castilla play years ago uh, on TV. Um, oh, man. I, 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 are Liverpool favourites. Um, I don't really rate Real Madrid anymore. I don't think that they're the same Real Madrid as when they last won the Champions League um, by any stretch of the imagination. They, they they obviously won La Liga last year, but they're not going to win it this time around, I don't think. They, they, they're back level, I think, at the top. Atletico have made a ball of it at the top. They were 10 points clear only a few games ago, and they, they've let all that they, slip. Barca and Real Madrid are, are, I think Madrid are level, um, and, and Barca are a point behind with a game in hand or something. So yeah, I it's, pro- it's a three-way fight. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't particularly rate any of those teams, to be perfectly honest. So yeah, I think I think I would agree with you, and I would say Liverpool are favourites. The the one man they need to watch out for is Benzema, who seems to have come into a a world of his own now. Uh, Ronaldo has after Ronaldo's left, he's been very good over the past three seasons. Um, but I, th- I think that midfield is still one of the best midfields in Europe with, with Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz. And they're Kroos. they're getting on now, mm. but they're they're still early thirties. You know, it's not like they're they early forties. Mm. I think that the, the defense for Madrid, the lack um, of Sergio Ramos will be a big. Yeah, one. the lack of Sergio Ramos is big, and I, I, not that I watch a ton of Spanish football, but I haven't ever been overly sold um, on their wide players as well. Um, but like I said, Benzema is very good, and there's as you said, their central midfielders are very good. But yeah, no, I think Liverpool have a better team. Um, and I think that Klopp is a much better manager than Zidane. Although Zidane does obviously like the like the Champions League, and he's had great success. But man, it's one of those one of those games where I don't think any result would surprise you. And it's a it's a massive tie. It's one of the two ties of the round, and I think it could go either way. But yeah, I'd probably call Liverpool favourites this time. The other game tonight, Manchester City uh, play against Borussia Dortmund in, in what's being dubbed mm. a, a, an audition for, for Erling Haaland a, against his, his next club, even though Pep Guardiola says that Manchester City are too poor to sign a striker in the summer. Yeah, the club owned by uh, the city of Abu Dhabi, <laughs> <laughs> who literally have a, a bottomless, an endless amount of oil money. He, he said a, that sounds about right. There's more of a chance that they won't sign a striker uh, than they will, even though Sergio Aguero mm. is leaving the club. Maybe what he's, I mean, I could kind of believe him if he was saying it's, it's just because they're looking for, they're, they're only looking at Haaland and the, he is talking to so many other clubs. So that means that there's a, they don't have that big a chance when you, when you think he, maybe he's talking to five Joe, uh, super rich clubs. He said, but, he said that they have Gabriel Jesus already and they like to play with a false nine sometimes. So mm. Foden, De Bruyne or uh, Fernand Torres. I think it'd be a big mistake to not replace Sergio Aguero. I know that, that he's barely featured this season. Uh, I obviously that's true, but 
Gab- is, does he really trust Gabriel Jesus no, to be no, their, no, no, their no. main striker? No, of course not. What, what he's yeah, trying to do is not. he's trying to avoid paying the Manchester United tax on players mm. because you might remember every, every, about 10 years ago, I think it was, was it David Moyes? It wouldn't have been 10 years ago, but I think it was Moyes came out and said that United, money wasn't an issue for Manchester United and they could pay whatever whatever they wanted for players. <laughs> and ever since then, they, they've been charged a, a 30 million pound premium on every single player that they've... Yeah, I, I, and an extra 20 on top of that if they're English. It's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think if, if there is a bidding war about to take place for for Brad Hurling Holland, I think I think it's to avoid any sort of excess being lumped on them for because, oh yeah, they've got tons of cash. It was kind of mad how the Haaland uh, transfer rumours were being reported over the weekend. It was like, oh, he's in Barcelona now. His Rayola and... Um, What's his dad's Alf Alfing Holland are in yeah. Barcelona? Oh no, now they're in Madrid. Like, where are they going to go next? They're going to go meet with Paris Saint Germain. Are they going to go to England? Yeah, they I'd went, imagine they if they're to coming England. to England, they're, they're they only already. going to be in Manchester. That would be well. They went to Liverpool as well. To this time, yeah. Now, yeah, like a week ago, they they met with they, went, they met with Liverpool last week as well. Two days after they were in Spain, they met with the Liverpool with Liverpool and two Manchester clubs. Those are those are the five clubs they've met with, and then PSG will be the will be the sixth. Mm, I didn't know they met with Liverpool. Um, th- with Liverpool, I think so uh, much is dependent on on them being in the Champions League next year. Chelsea are an option as well. Well, Chelsea could afford him. I, I don't know how attractive Chelsea are right now. I, I suppose if money is the only thing you want, or a, the London lifestyle, then yeah, but and possibly Champions League again. Mm. Well, look. Let, let's Again, talk. Just, if you're let, looking at, the, I mean, the, what, what what does he what does he want? I think he want he, he he should be wanting to play for an absolutely elite club, and not just an elite club. Well, okay, an, an elite club, and I suppose City and Chelsea are both in that in that bracket. He should be wanting to win trophies. I don't think that Chelsea do do that anymore. Chelsea aren't a guarantee of success. No. Uh, they, they, that was that was uh, you know up, up until Conte left. Recently, the last few seasons they've been they've been struggling. Obviously, they did win the Europa League, but that was but that was it. Um, and he wants to be earning top, you know, in the in the top bracket Half a million of, a week. Of, like. uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is crazy money, but that's the going rate for elite strikers. So I think if you're talking about those three those three factors, I'm not so sure if Chelsea fits in that. I think in, Liverpool, in, yeah, fair, fair, fair enough. But Liverpool, I don't think Liverpool could pay that. And I don't think they would pay that because that would be breaking their what Liverpool do structure. is they pay out huge sums of cash through bonuses. So Mo Salah, his base is about two hundred grand a week, but I think in actual fact he took home above three hundred and fifty thousand a week, averaged out last season after they won the Premier League because of the bonuses and it's the commission man. Well, it it's is commission. Yeah, so yeah. It, they, yeah. they could They're offer sales, they could offer Haaland some sort of deal where he could earn up to 400 grand a week, depending on mm. performance kind of thing. And if he wanted to go and work with Klopp for a couple of years and, you know, be part of this Liverpool team that are challenging on both fronts, he might consider that for a few years, you know, before he moves on to a, a Spanish club or to, you know, Bayern Munich or whoever it might be. Because mm. we haven't mentioned Munich and they obviously fall into that category, but they have Lewandowski and yeah. I don't, they, they wouldn't, you know, Lewandowski's goal record in the last few years is is at least as good as Haaland's. But, ha- I mean, man, what a player. I hope he doesn't go to one of the Manchester clubs or Chelsea. I, I, but I, I don't know where, you know, I, I really like him. And it's going to be really difficult to like him if he goes to play for Barcelona. Um, if he plays for Real Madrid, I could still like him. But if he goes to Mar- <laughs> Barcelona or Chelsea or one of the Manchester clubs, God... That'll be that'll ruin ruin my the, the, my favorite uh, young player. I suppose the most interesting thing is that Kylian Mbappe looks like he could be moving this summer as well. I say could be because it's not guaranteed, mm. but I, I suppose like he's almost been forgotten about with all the the hype around Mbappe. Um, look, mm. look, hang on, we'll get back onto the Premier League for a sec um, because I think that any any of these big players moving to moving to an English team would demand Champions League football, and there've been a host yeah. of English clubs. <laughs> over the last three weeks absolutely desperate to avoid playing in the Champions League next year <laughs> and I think that the, the only place that we can start here is with Chelsea we had obviously yeah. given them a lot of praise over the last few weeks especially when they beat Liverpool but to go down 5-2 
at home to West Brom, one of the worst teams in, in recent Premier League history, a Sam mm. Allardyce team, mm. to concede five goals. And to be outplayed, home. to be outplayed be by West park. Brom. Yeah, it's embarrassing. I don't know if embarrassing quite cuts. It's a truly abject performance and a truly abject result. Um, and it tells us that Chelsea are not what we are, what the, the, the British press were leading us to believe they were. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted for them. We had um, Gary Neville on Sky Sports last night justifying Gareth Southgate's decision to to bring Rhys James um, to the England squad in, in, in the recent games and, and potentially to the Euros ahead of Trent Alexander-Arnold. And he was absolutely destroyed. He was absolutely... They, they were mm. running rings around him. I think two, two or three goals came down his side. You know, he, he was giving the ball away. He was getting dribbled past, making errors leading to goals. He had an absolute mare. Mm. Nonsense. Nonsense. I... I yeah, absolute nonsense. Neville, Neville, Neville's usually spot on, but saying that Reese James deserves to be picked for England ahead of Trent Tr- Tr- Alexander Arnold is the best right back in the world. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on, Reese James is a, is is a decent young fullback, but I mean that's it. He's he's proved nothing so far. He's he's okay going forward. I think defensively he's he's a disaster. Well, I think uh, he's people much say- worse than Trent was. Um, last season, and people say it's the other way around that that he's superior defensively, you know. But I, I just don't, I just don't see it. I just don't get it. He, like you said, he, no, he's, he's a decent he's, player. He's okay. He's, 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 a, he's a decent player. He's all right. Like he'd be good for a mid-table club. He's not, uh, t- and, and maybe he'll develop into a into a into a better player than we're giving him credit for right now. But I mean, come on, is, what's he done? Since Tuchel came, like to he Chelsea, looks all right, but he's been struggling to get into the team ahead of Hudson Odoi, and Hudson Odoi is a winger. Mm. Or even Aspilicueta. Aspilicueta has sometimes played fullback or wing back. Yeah, the, the, like he's by no mo- no means first choice mm. at Chelsea behind players that are by no means world class. And look, Thiago Silva was was sent off for a couple of soft yellow cards, so that there is something in Chelsea's favour to say. You know, look, is they're there? playing with ten men. But should, should, you losing, should, should you be conceding five at home to West to a <laughs> Sam Allardyce West Brom with ten men? Absolutely not. Absolutely you shouldn't, you shouldn't not. even be conceding one or two. You should be like at the very least, you should be holding out for for a low scoring draw. Uh, like I would say, you should still even be winning. <laughs> it's pathetic, and I mean the the is is I know they scored a couple of goals, but it's not just defensively. I think I think there needs to be a, a conversation about Timo Werner, and it goes beyond his Chelsea career because he was pathetic for Germany during the week. And that look, he's a player his, his, his bereft confidence, of confidence. Yeah, he is, and he's still I, young enough as well. Is he? He's 24, 25. He's not, he's by no means old and experienced or veteran, you know. I, I, I think it'd be fair to say he's in his well, maybe prime is kind of uh 20, 26, 27, 28. What would you say, Rafe? For, for, a striker. A, for a striker, 28, 29. Like, look at look at Lewandowski now, yeah, you know? Lewandowski and Suarez when he was that age, yeah, yeah. The thing about Werner, I think I've said this before, is that he's such an almost player. He seems to he's twenty-five. He seems to be permanently six inches offside, and he seems to be constantly hitting the post or the crossbar or nudging them just wide or you know slightly mm. mispacing classes. And he looks, he, he's ninety-five percent of the way there, but it's just it's the fine details that are that are killing him, and, and that those are the details I think that that come with that confidence. Do you think? Well, I, for his, for his sake, I'd hope so. <laughs> So um, he has a worse goal-scoring record than Maro and Shamak did in his first season for Arsenal <laughs> and Andre Varanen in his first season for Liverpool. <laughs> and he costs oh. over £60 million. Varanen is remembered as, as one of the worst five signings for Liverpool in Premier League history. Varanen got five and 19 in the league. Werner has five and 29. Shamak got seven and 29 in the league in his first season. That is right. diabolical. Yeah, it's shocking. Absolutely shocking. But I mean, this is, you know, there, there's been a lot of coverage of this, but I, I just thought it'd be nice to highlight to, 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 to some comparisons with players who were truly derided as among the worst to have ever played for the, <laughs> their cl- respective clubs in the Premier League. Um, I, I, Werner's going to be in that category. He's, 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 he's a Fernando Torres. Actually, that, 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 that's a very good comparison. But Chelsea... And I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but this is not the first forward who's come to Chelsea and flopped. 
they no. really have a history of this. I mean, it obviously goes back to Shevchenko, but Hernan Crespo hardly set the world alight when when he joined. Falcao. Um, Fa- yeah, Falcao, Mattia Kesman, Adrian Mutu, although obviously with Mutu there are disciplinary issues as well. Um, and, not, and then obviously Fernando Torres as well. But he, even players like Samuel Eto'o, yeah. Didn't do what 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 they are expected to do. Chelsea have a a long standing Murata, Alvaro Murata. <laughs> yeah, more recently, it, it's quite a long list actually. When you think about it, isn't it? It, it, it really is. And it, you know, he's wearing the number eleven, but there's there's those other players. I think most of those other players are wearing the number nine. And I think that Chelsea haven't had a good number nine in. I mean, Tammy Abraham is genuinely their best number nine since Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Olivier and Giroud, I think, not- as the best goal scoring record of the three of them. Mm. Yeah, I'm talking about the, like literally the squad number. The squad oh, okay. Number yeah, 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 yeah. But no, Giroud is out of the three of them. Yeah, Giroud is the best. Demba Ba wore nine as well, didn't he? I think he wore nineteen. I did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And Eto wore twenty nine. Torres wore nine. It wasn't just Chelsea slipping up this weekend, though. Joe Spurs went behind to Newcastle, went two one up, mm. and then. Blew it again in in classic Spursy fashion. <laughs> We've hit our hit our quota yeah, for for the third Spursy. Somehow just three points off four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did enjoy it, but I mean, I can't enjoy it as. I mean, if if I, all I'm getting is half enjoyment of Spurs uh, slipping up in their uh, pursuit for for top four while still actually only being three points off fourth, I mean that's pretty pathetic. Uh, I was, I was, it was, it was great when they got lo- knocked out of the Europa League because that was just wonderful. And I mean, it, it is, I mean, it is great that they're conceding late equalizers uh, to but this Joe, Newcastle. Joe, they had, they had the chance to grab this race by the horns. This, this race in fourth mm. place. You know, they could have gone to. Oh, I mean, they were top. They were, they were top in. They were top in December. Yeah. But even now, it's, it's been a. In, in this battle for fourth place, I mean, Spurs have got to play lots of teams around them. And this was a massive chance for them to take, like two, two points is absolutely huge in this race. I guarantee you that whoever mm. finishes fourth, if you take two points away from them, they won't be fourth at, come, come mm. the end of the season. You know, this is there. So no one's going to take it by four or five points. You know, this is going to be a point. It's going to be goal difference. It's going to be two points max. You know, Spurs could have knocked themselves out of, your, out of the Champions League next year. By conceding a late equaliser to Newcastle, do you know what? And Newcastle are rubbish. You talk about West Brom. Hang on. Oh, Newcastle! Newcastle, Newcastle are, are the worst. Newcastle like are the worst Monaco. team in the Premier League. Newcastle are the worst team in the Premier League. They are <laughs> shocking. They are absolutely pathetic. If I talk about Arsenal being pathetic, <laughs> Newcastle are pathetic, and Steve Bruce, they are a joke. I, I, I mean, I, I can't. It, it, it's difficult to, to 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 realize that this was once a club who played some of the most exciting football in 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 europe under under kevin keegan and bobby robson really 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 good stuff in in front of an incredibly passionate crowd and and that that club has been run into the ground by mike ashley and the fact that steve bruce is still in charge and that he wasn't sacked um you know three months ago that's that says it all there's how do they have faith in in him to keep them up after seeing what's happened this season. I think recently there was a stat put out about the approval rating of respective managers among their fans. I saw this. And Bruce was by far the lowest. He was about 24%. But I thought that that was high for him. Yeah, 24% of fans were somehow happy with him. <laughs> I don't understand how, how that happened. That, that happened. Um, but yeah, on, on Spurs, I mean, without Harry Kane, they, they, I've, I've said it, without Harry Kane, they would be, they would be a bottom half team. Without Harry Kane, they're a joke. Harry Kane is a a, 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 a genuine world class player. He's he's a wonderful striker, um, and the, the rest of their squad and their and their manager are pretty abject, to be quite honest. And it's one of those cases where there's one or two players who are literally sustaining the, a, a, any hope of uh, a decent season that rests on the shoulders of Harry Kane and, and less so Son Young Min. Joe, when you think about the phrase, it, it's happening again. It, it, Spurs, yes. Spurs, Spurs come to mind, but there's another club that I want to talk to you about, um, Leicester City. Mm. So since, since they've beaten Liverpool, they beat Aston Villa and then they were knocked out of the Europa League by Slavia Prague. Since then, they've lost 3-1 to Arsenal. They've drawn one all 
with Burnley. They've be- beaten Brighton 1-0, Sheffield 5-0, United 3-1. They've lost now to Manchester City 2-0. So it's, it's up and down. It's mixed. There's a couple of good wins, a couple of, a couple of bad games. They, got, they now play West Ham in the next game, which is absolutely huge. Mm. They are I still- fancy West Ham in that, man. Yeah, they, they, they play West Brom, they play Palace, they play Southampton, they play Newcastle, they play... Then, crucially, the last three games of the season, they play United, Chelsea and Leicester and uh, Spurs. Mm. They've got a lot of work to do to make sure that they're going into that, those three games with a bit of a cushion, you know? we mm. Now is the stage. Over the, Obviously, West Ham's a tough game as well. They've got a few games then that they need to pick up points. And I, I'm not convinced that they're going to do it. No, Rafe, neither am I. I see Liverpool are seven points off them. I want to say that I I I I I, I fancy Liverpool to finish ahead of Leicester. That's a big call. It is a big call. I've made it. I fancy Liverpool to finish ahead of Leicester. I fan- okay. I fancy Liverpool to finish the season well. I think that Fabinho coming back and playing in his preferred position. Um Will then Jota coming back will will do Liverpool the, the the world of good. I mean, I mean Liverpool looked like Liverpool against Arsenal. Yeah, and, and look, they have been playing well in in recent games. You know, like that they they took apart Leipzig in the Champions League. I know Wolves are bottom half, but they're they're still a, a difficult team to to break down, mm. and they saw them I, off comfortably enough as well. Le- Le- Leicester will lose half of their remaining Premier League games. Yeah, I think that's fair. If they'll lose four. So it's a, and they, I, I, maybe they win they they win three so that gives them nine ten points. I I I, I don't think that Liverpool will drop too many points over the remainder of the season. The the, the Liverpool, thing, Liverpool the, have by far the easiest run in the the only yeah, top half that, team exactly, they have to play is Manchester United. That's that's exactly right, and I think they'll do away with Manchester United as well. Fingers crossed, um, mate. Sorry. I said, fingers crossed, mate. <laughs> yeah. No, but the, the only thing that's in Leicester's favour, I think, is they have points on the board. And if you look at the three teams directly below them, it's West Ham, Chelsea and Tottenham. Um, so, Well, look, on, on Spurs, before we move completely past them for a sec, they still have got to play against United. They've got to play against Everton, who are in that race as well. Uh, mm. They've got to play against Leicester, like we said, on the last day of the season. They still have to play Villa, who we know are a decent team. Wolves are hard to beat. They have to play against Leeds. The only easy game that are easier games they have are, are Southampton and Sheffield United and I'm not based on what I saw over the weekend I'm not sure that Spurs win any of those games you know they've got a League Cup final against uh, Man City in the middle of that that they're going to be absolutely fixated on they're going to be yeah. so focused on this League Cup final that is uh, four days after the Southampton game. Like, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know if they'll beat I United. I don't know if they'll beat Everton. They'll be thinking about the final when they play uh, Southampton. They'll have just lost the final and, uh, when they play Sheffield United. You know, they'll, they'll be absolutely gutted having lost that. Having then blown all of the top four race going into Leeds, Bielsa is going to take them apart. They're going to, they're, they're, Arsenal will be a hot on their heels by the time they go to play Wolves. They'll, they'll draw that one all or something Villa will beat them and then Leicester will probably beat them on the last day of the season and they'll finish 14th that, yeah. that's honestly how I feel about Spurs I have no faith in them at all and I know that they will win some of those games but they need to win all of those games mm. if, they, if they're if they serious yeah. about playing in the Champions League and I don't it's, see it happening it's, it's, not, it's not happening do you know how nervous they're going to be for the League Cup final man they've lost it already <laughs> yes do you know the difference in dressing room morale like <laughs> City C- right will, play- will be playing music and walking around having the chats, you know? It'll be City a normal play this game every year. City play and win this game every year. And they, they normally play the FA Cup final as well or, you know, other Wembley games. that They love the yeah. domestic cup finals, you know, big Premier League games that they're, they're used to playing and losing big games in the Champions League. But, they, I mean, they, they've been there and done it so yeah. many times. Yeah. No, I, 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 I fear for Spurs. I fear for Spurs, and 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 I mean, the wider ramifications of, of of, I think the way they were knocked out in the Europa League and who they were knocked out by, and how they've let their form in the Premier League slip away, uh, is 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 really really poor. I mean, it, 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 it's and the it's, football it's, they it's, play it's, as it's, well, Joe. Yeah, the football they play. But it's it's an interesting one because, you know, you can have ups if you if you if you're having ups and downs consistently along the season. Then you're like, okay, we're not, you know, it was all right, but it, we weren't quite 
where we, we should have been. But if you start really well and then you slip off like the way they, I mean, they were top just before Christmas. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're sixth. I know they, they've, they've won a few games recently, but it, it was very poor and it was very poor again uh, over the weekend. Um, and then to get knocked out of the Europa League in that, in that fashion, I think it's, it's, it's been a really bad season for them. Really, really, really bad. Another team, Joe, who are falling over themselves not to finish in the top four are Everton, who obviously mm. got off to another flyer. Um, they had the opportunity to go level with Liverpool with the game in hand um, at home to Crystal Palace in front of it in an empty stadium just go and do it you know go and win that game if you're serious <laughs> if you're a proper football club just go and yeah. win it you know crystal are palace you surprised no crystal like crystal yeah. palace are 12th they, they they it's a classic roy hodgson thing with them you know they get off to a good start get a few points on the board and then they just nick just nick points off teams all season you know what you know what's coming you know what to expect i mean just just go and win the game. Like I, I, I don't. May, maybe I'm, I'm doing Crystal Palace a, a disservice, but they're one 0 up. Everton, you know. Yeah. Palace equalised in the 87th minute. Yeah, man. I think that says it all. I mean, See but, I that mean, game out. Yeah, but I mean, man, not, neither of us are surprised. I don't think anyone. Everton are exactly where we'd expect them to be. I, I mean, they're another one who got off to a good start of the season, and there was one point where it was kind of Everton and Leicester that they were being talked about in the same in the same conversation. And I know we've given Leicester a little bit of stick today, but I mean, considering their the size of that club, I mean, it's they're not a big club. <laughs> I, I know they've been good in recent seasons, but they're not a big club. They don't have a uh, they don't have a big history. They don't have a massive fan base. They don't have great wealth. I know their owners have uh, have money, but they don't have. But you know, they 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 run extremely well. The players they buy are extremely. Uh, they invest in players. They buy the right type of players. They buy players with with high potential. Joe, they, they can hang on, but this they're, they're playing against Crystal Palace. We're look uh, Everton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking yeah. at this game, they're playing against. You talk about you know not having a, a wealth of resources. Like you know, Crystal Palace, they have Gary Cahill playing centre back for them. No, uh, Crystal Palace. Joel really Ward right back. I, 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 I was talking about Leicester. That man, I was talking about Leicester. Oh, there. Leicester. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 about Leicester to kind of show how Leicester are actually doing well, even if they they're not doing as well as we might think. But that's to their credit. Everton have a lot of money. Everton have spent tons of money. Everton have, uh, have, have a very high wage bill. Everton have very manager, highly regarded players. A manager who's and paid a huge amount of money. A hundred percent. And one of the best managers in the history of uh, uh, of the game as well. Um, they have Calvert-Lewin, man. who's been playing for England starting up top. They have Richarlison, who, man, they, who they turned down a hundred million quid bid for a couple of years ago uh, from Barcelona. They have Lucas Digne, who's one of the best fullbacks in the league. James Rodriguez playing in behind. You know, Gomez came from Barcelona. Mina came mm-hmm. from Barcelona. Keenan Holgate are, are now slouches at the back. Tom Davies was, was you know somehow starting ahead of Curtis Jones uh, for the England under-21s recently. And, and James yeah. Coleman, who, who's an absolute veteran of, of the league. You know, the, the only player they're missing really from their starting lineup is the goalkeeper Pickford. And sorry, one of the midfielders who normally starts ahead of Davies. Um, Decore? Decore, yeah. So in fairness, they're missing, Alan, m- missing two midfielders from that team. But it still should be good enough to see off Crystal Palace at home. Mm. Can you answer me this? What country is Carlo Ancelotti from? Russia? No. Is it? Is Italian, man? It's Italian. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what are What are Italy and, and, and what are Italian man. teams? To, what are Italians pr- traditionally known for? Defending. Seeing out one nil wins. Yeah. Defending. Russia. <laughs> Russia. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Russian. <laughs> Ancelotti. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. That surprise that 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 surprises me that they they're conceived. But again, it's 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 Everton. It's the history of the Everton. It is, in fairness, they, it is. Yeah. Look, Joe, there are two teams this weekend that did actually want to finish in the Champions League spots. The first is Manchester United, who I, I say they wanted to finish there. Harry Maguire didn't seem to want to finish in the Champions League spots. He was led away with, with another just oh right mind boggling. Mind-boggling mm. refereeing decision, and uh, like 
people we've, we've we've talked a lot about VAR on this show this year Joe and about how you know it's, it slows the game down and it's good and it's bad but I mean they get decisions wrong it's still subjective and they still still continually give Manchester United players a ridiculous benefit of the day mm. that, 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 what the, is luxury that gets afforded to nobody else I can't I, yeah I, I can't fathom why there's why there's one rule for for players like Harry Maguire and Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford. And then there's another rule for every, everyone else that these uh, specific English players um, get away with, with footballing murder. I mean, Harry, Harry Maguire pulled down Danny Welbeck and on the six the back yard the line as well. Uh, yeah. And, and clipped his legs as, as Welbeck was about to, uh, to, to apply a finish six yards out from goal. He, he was the last man and he denied a clear and obvious goal scoring opportunity. Made no attempt to play the ball. No attempt. Not only is that a penalty, but that's an automatic red card. And ha- he, nothing was given. Dermot Gallagher. Mike, but, but did you see who was referee? Yeah, I did. Yeah, your mate. <laughs> Dino. Dino, yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, but Dur- is- Dermot Gallagher came out afterwards, Joe, mm. and, and said that it wasn't comparable to other incidents because Maguire made a legitimate attempt to play the ball. Apparently he was lunging for the ball, Joe. The ball but was the, 10 it, yards it, it, away it, it, from Maguire. He could have had it, 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 an extra it, it, three it, it, legs and wouldn't have reached the ball. Yeah, to, to, to get to the ball, he had to go through the man. And that's exactly what he did. And as far as I remember in football, if you go through the man, it's a foul, even if you're trying <laughs> to play the ball. <laughs> I mean, this isn't the first time that Maguire has got away with one this season. I, it, it's like the fourth or fifth time that he should have been sent off or conceded a penalty or a dangerous. And that, that's nailed on. That's not even subjective. You know, it, absolutely. Man, the, man, the PGMOL was, and, and Dermot Gallagher are coming out and defending him as well. Yeah, and, of course they are. Of course, of course they are because they are part of this this, this agenda. I, 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 yeah, I, have you seen the that thing video, is, Joe, for the the cricket, um, the the parks uh, LBW? You know the the DRS where it's for mm. for park leagues where you know your man Stonewall LBW and it goes to yeah. you. Yeah, right. So look, uh, the the cam shows that it's it's clear it's hitting. You know, bells are coming off. But remember, he's giving you a lift home. You know, so it's not out, you know, and it's, it's like that. It's like, yeah, so look, Maguire, yeah. it, it's a clear foul. He's pulled him. He's kicked him. He's denied a goal scoring opportunity. Normally penalty red card. But remember, he scored the winner for England during the week. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's scored. Yeah, exactly. we need him in good form for the Euros. You know, he can't be missing yeah. three games. Yeah, it's an, it's, it's, it's an absolute farce. And, and I mean, he's defended in the media as well. But you know what's so funny? Once he makes a mistake for England in a major tournament, he'll be thrown under the bus. Oh, God, yeah. I'm like, I can't wait for it. I'm living for it. I to, cannot to wait for it. I, well, th- this is the thing. This is the one time that I don't want him to be thrown. I mean, I mean throw him under the bus now while he's playing for United. While he's playing for England, I need him to be, I need him to be I decent. I can't wait for it. The first game, first game of the tournament, he's going to make a mistake and get a red mm. card. And it's going to be absolutely brilliant. The scenes when, you mm. know, Eric Dyer well, is starting at centre half in the second it, game. It, it happened uh, last year when he was playing for England. He got sent off. He had an awful game. But yeah. it's the only time that he'll get punished is when he's playing for England. Oh, man. I, I, I'm surprised we came to it so late because it's such an important talking point. And I, I mean, it's just embarrassing for the PGMOL and for the FA that, that, that these sort of decisions. And it's specifically for players like Harry Kane and Harry Maguire. It, it's, it's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Joey, a Manchester United player who has been on absolute fire for the last couple of months, he's made his way back into the England team, not playing for Manchester United. Jesse Lingard playing Mm. for West Ham. I mean, West Ham were good before they got him on board, but what he's done since joining West Ham is is unbelievable. I don't think anybody saw this coming. No, absolutely not. I mean, he was derided and, and written off completely. He was a joke. Um, he's coming to West Ham and he's, he's been given freedom to play in his preferred position of central attacking midfield and in a counter-attacking team. And when Jesse Lingard was doing well for Manchester United, that's exactly the position and the style of play that he was he was playing. He's not going to be ever given that opportunity to play in that position for Manchester United because of Bruno Fernandes. I think us- arguably he's better than Bruno Fernandes on, <laughs> in, 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 in open I'm play. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I quite agree with that. Although I know a few Manchester United fans who would take issue with it. 
and a few fake Manchester United fans who would take issue with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> closet Manchester United fans, maybe is a better word. Um, no, he's been brilliant and, and, and credit to him um, and credit to David Moyes as well. Uh, what a renaissance for Jesse Lingard, for young Jesse Lingard. An- another win for them over the weekend. Three, they saw off Wolves 3-2. They, look, they let Wolves back into the game. They were 3 nil mm. up. But they do hold down that fourth place for themselves. They're a point clear of Chelsea now at this stage. They're, they're two points clear of Tottenham and Liverpool. Um, I mean, at what stage do we have to seriously believe that they might do it? They're only four points behind I, Leicester. We talk about no, Leicester. I, 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 points. I think we absolutely have to think that they might do it. I'm not saying that we're not saying they will, but I mean, it's a very strong possibility. It's a, they have a very good chance. They're occupying fourth place with eight, eight games to go. Their next we, game is it. against Leicester. Mm. The, the, the thing is, can they hold out? I mean, wh- when's the last time that uh, a lesser club, a club we really didn't expect to finish in the top four, finished in the top four? Because often, I mean, I can remember Charleston Athletic being fourth with about eight games to go in 2004 or five, and they lost like five or six of the, the last games and finished seventh. It, 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 that's You're not going the back only to, example. to Leicester winning the league, you know, it was the last time. Mm. Uh, uh, a min a minnow per se qualified for the Champions League. I that, mean, that's it. it, it West Ham it rarely ha- happens. West Ham have got to play against Leicester. They've got to play against Chelsea, and they've got to play against Everton. And if they mm. can win those three games, they'll pick up enough over the other few. And they'll I, finish in the top four. Yeah, I think at, at this stage it, it's a genuine possibility. And this is remember, this show. This is a team that we had as favourites to go down at the start of yes. the season. That everybody had as favourites yeah. to go down. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been, it's been a, I mean. I, re- I think David Moyes needs to be manager of the year. Uh, certainly, if he's not in the conversation, it's it's really unfair because he's been he, he's he was he was another. Jo- I mean, we talk- I, I mentioned Jesse Lingard being had, had become a joke. Moyes had become a joke. He had yeah. absolutely become a joke, and he's turned it around. And he he's gone away, and he's um, improved himself. He spent time in Spain learning new coaching techniques and beco- and and, and uh, getting up to speed with the modern game. Um, and it's it's done him the world of good because he wouldn't have got West Ham into the position that they are in now without doing so. So f- fair play to him and credit to him, and credit to, we, to we the talk owners about actually for players from that players and coaching staff from that Manchester United team that that became a joke. Roman Lukaku, Joe, Inter mm. Milan are eight points clear at the top of Serie A with a game in hand over mm. second place AC Milan. They are absolutely flying. Lukaku is top scorer. He's broken Ronaldo's goal scoring record. Uh, Brazilian mm. Ronaldo. Um, for for Inter Milan, for Inter, yeah. Ashley, 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 Ashley Young is playing for that team. I think Alexis Sanchez is playing for that team. Could could maybe we see Jesse Lingard move to Inter Milan next year? <laughs> you know, link up with these boys. Mm. I don't know, man. I I, I I would say that Serie A is pretty average, but Lukaku is a great player. I've always rated Lukaku. He's a phenomenal striker. He's but maybe maybe the issue striker. is Manchester United. I think about other players that, that left that team. You think about Di Maria has gone on to, to hit heights again at, at PSG. You think about uh, Memphis Depay, you know, who, who's linked to a move back to the Premier League this year, has, has been in great form for Leon. What is it about Manchester United that that's so toxic? I think that in recent years, United have been buying quality players without a plan of how they fit in. Yeah. Without, 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 uh, without, Van Persie was the last player that they bought who was for, for a very specific purpose because the year, two years after that is when Van Gaal was appointed and they, they bought, brought in Di Maria and Falcao and it really didn't work because they didn't, you know, they had Rooney, they had Van Persie, they had Falcao. How are they fitting? How are you fitting those three and Angel Di Maria into the same team? And they couldn't. It worked in flashes at the start. I remember Di Maria had a couple of absolutely phenomenal games, and then it it, it all it all fell away. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my answer, man. Because they were buying they were buying players and who were great players, but they had no idea of. <laughs> they were just buying them because they were great players. They were they, there was no. It's the a complete opposite of how Liverpool go about their transfer business um, now. Yeah, look, it, it's boring talking about Manchester City. We we touched on them, and the, and the, do you think they'll win in the Champions League? Man City. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You don't think that Haaland will, will cause 
them too many issues. They're obviously playing in Manchester tonight, and uh, not that it really mm. matters in, in empty stadiums, but they're in Manchester tonight. Man, Hallam scores like two goals a game in the Champions League. Yeah, he's a phenomenon. He's an absolute phenomenon, and he could he could easily score against Manchester City. I don't think that he's going to be enough to beat them. I don't think Dortmund are great. I think Haaland's great, but Dortmund are, are an average team, an average team with a with a world class striker. I think Manchester City will 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 do away with them. Man, the, like Jaden Sancho to... is Jaden Sancho fifth. Jaden Sancho's not had a good season, certainly compared to to, to last season. I don't know if he's fit. Was but he, yeah, no, was I, he in the England I, squad? I forget. I don't think he was in the English squad. Yeah, he mu- no. mustn't be fit then. Yeah, and I don't, fa- I, I, I don't fancy Dortmund to progress there. I have to say. Uh, th- we t- we spoke about Newcastle, Joe, and and their rubbish performance. Well, not rubbish performance, but rubbish performance over the season. They picked up a point against Spurs, which now sees them stay three points ahead of Fulham. Fulham lost to Villa in what one of the biggest games of the relegation battle mm. the season. They were a goal up in that, and they conceded three and. At this stage, they've only got seven games left to play and it looks like curtains for them. Let me just double check the table again. I think it's just three points. Yeah, it's three points. With a game in hand. Curtains. I wouldn't say curtains just yet because Fulham are in bad form. Like They've lost four of the last five, winning one. Newcastle, however, are incapable of winning games of football. Um, so if Newcastle can draw enough games, <laughs> then they'll stay up. But Fulham <laughs> will win a couple and... Uh, that could it could be enough. I wouldn't say it's curtains just yet, but yeah, man, that was a that was a huge a huge loss for for Fulham for sure. Right. Well, look, that seems to be. I'm I'm going through our notes here, Joe, and that seems to be pretty much um, everything. Yeah, man, we, 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 Rave, we we got a lot covered today. It was an extensive discussion on the the would action you, of the. Would you hazard a guess as to if, if Chelsea beat Porto tomorrow? Um. It's in Portugal. I think I think I'll go for an upset there, man. I think I'll go for an upset across the whole tie. I fancy, I fancy Porto to to progress through that. And then the big one tomorrow, Munich PSG. Yeah, Munich. Yeah. Yeah, been there, done it. Munich, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. All right. Um. Any any update on the on the true crime special that we that we promised people for for later in the week? Yeah, I think that we'll be recording that this week. And obviously we won't give anything away until then, but do keep an eye out for that. And uh, before you know it, there'll be another podcast coming from us. Uh, and we can't wait to, to get started with that. And that'll be a, a, a less regular one, but it'll be a, a, a monthly or bi-weekly. <laughs> I think bi-weekly is a bit ambitious. Yeah, maybe we'll do monthly. Monthly, we'll do monthly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. All right. Can't, can't wait. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Cheers.